coming right there. <laughs>Everybody loves the M1 Garand, but uh, <laughs> we like the M1 Garand with rifle grenades. All right, I am here with Sergeant Major Rick Lamb. We're going to talk about this stuff, but first, real quick, uh, we're going to give a shout out to our to this video sponsor. I'll see you back in a minute. Hey guys, this week's video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide. I mean, they've got some, lots of great deals on clothing, footgear, guns, ammo, optics, everything. Here's the other cool part, the reason why I like Sportsman's Guide is they also do military surplus. So if you want an ammo cans or those, those trigger finger mittens, all, all that weird stuff that you see us using in those World War II videos, there's lots of great stuff that you guys can get. Yeah, it's military surplus, but it was also stuff that was good enough for me when I was back in the military. I love that stuff. So anyways, I want to thank Sportsman's Guide for helping us get you this video. All right, guys, I am here with Command Sergeant Major Rick Lamb. Man, dude, you are just <laughs> awesome. Thank I, you. Um, there's a lot of videos on the internet about the M1 Garand, almost to the point to where guys like name their channels after it and stuff. But... Um, it's a great gun, very iconic uh, part of American history, really. M1 Garand, uh, just lots of stuff about it. Um, I see you You brought, I, I've never played with these. You okay. ever played with these? <laughs> no, I, I've never shot this yet. Oh, shit. <laughs> this, this will be another tactical rifleman first. There you go. All right. Um, before we get to that, though. I believe we're going to have your son shoot it first, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we get to the grenades, though, uh, a lot of honest, a lot of our viewers are not familiar with uh, why this is literally a piece of American history. There, the M1 Garand. Where do you want to start? It, it, it replaces the uh, the O3 Springfield and bolt uh, the bolt action, and, and, and we'll we'll cover that in another video. But uh, the O3 Springfield bolt action in uh, 6 and uh, another little unknown factoid is that uh, the one that we'll put in the other video, that's a, an O3 A3. And uh, because we didn't physically, the, the Grand comes out in 1936. By 1938, we're fielding it across the force, and then we okay. start building that force to go to Europe. So we put like millions of guys in uniform, but we don't have enough M1 Garands to outfit the force. So they retool the O3 Springfield. To shoot the 30 to, to, well, No, it's, it's already shooting a 30 out 6 but it, okay. had, it had a uh, big old leaf sight on it, so they put a peep sight on the back of the O3 okay. A3. They rebarreled it and put it in a new stock, and then they shipped most of those to the Pacific. So the uh, the O3 A3 Springfield that we have uh, for, the, for the next video yeah. uh, is actually uh, in tandem uh, with this rifle was kind of the workhorse of World War II. But okay. this, this rifle changes everything because it it's, really not, does. it's not bolt action. It's, it's gas operated. So uh, it, it uses an eight-round N-block clip that you uh, that you stick in here through the top. You ever heard of Garand thumb? Yeah, Garand thumb. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, there, there's a knack to that and uh, putting that thing in. And if you and, don't do uh, it, she'll bite you. It'll, it'll, she it will it will bite, bite you. you. All right, uh, no, so, let's not load it till we get no, out to the range. Oh yeah. Though. So so uh, what, what I want to do here is, is lay that in there. Now you okay. think about the fact that this uh, this grenadier uh, is shooting live ball ammo. And uh, when he puts this grenade launcher on the end, the, uh, it traps the gas to the point of where now it won't cycle the round. So he's back to uh, bolt action, bolt action mm. every time. But now he can't shoot a live round into this rifle grenade. or Because that would be up. bad. That would be very bad. He's got to use a blank. All right, so now so, so not now only he's is... He's unload, load... But uh, he's probably just going to do one round at a time. Okay. And uh, and then he's got to put the grenade on, pull the pin, get it to the right uh, the right elevation that he wants. You know, with this, you can either eyeball it or use his quadrant sight or use his sling like we used to do. Okay. Yeah. Literally, I and, sit uh, on the ground with yeah, the marks. Exactly. Uh, to get you 30 to 45 degrees. Yep. Okay. And uh, so all this stuff is going through the grenadier's head. And uh, so we we don't uh, start fielding these grenade launchers until right around 1943. So, uh, so about mid-war, yeah. and, uh, and so initially the assistant squad leader, remember we got the 12-man rifle yep, squad, 12 man. squad leader's got his two scouts out and he's got his BAR team with the, uh, the assistant squad leader, the, the next senior guy, the E5, he's, uh, he's got a grenade launcher. And uh, so now in my mind, and again, I don't know, I haven't read enough about it, do you keep the grenade launcher on it and just know that you're single shot from there on out? Um, and then all you got to worry about is just putting a blank in there. I would or think. Or do you stop, put all this gear on, and then shoot? 
So I've seen pictures mm. of both. I've seen guys moving, you know, in uh, you know on a road march yeah. with the grenadier because uh, eventually they uh, they not only have the, the the assistant squad leader as a grenadier, but they put two grenadiers in that guy's team. Just like they added a yeah. BAR to each fire Correct. team. Correct. Yep. They yep. add a grenadier. And again, I don't know if that was um, they 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 started seeing the utility in these. Or they had trouble disengaging the BAR, so they needed grenades to, to, to go out and, and allow that, you know. So, Possibly. but anyway, and, and it's just you know, it's, it's use of technology, but uh, but that's the that's the big thing. Now they started issuing these, probably uh, 44, 45, and this uh, each infantryman would, would get two of these, and it was for uh, for additional ammo. So each they, grenadier they, they, would get two. Uh, I think every infantryman. Every yeah, infantryman. By the time got at the end of the war, of, every okay. every infantryman had not only his uh, his his belt, which has got um, ten. You know, it's got 80 rounds in it. One one clip inside Correct. each one. Correct. Yeah, one yeah. clip inside okay. each one. All right. And uh, and he's of course obviously got his bayonet. They came out with these sights late in the war. I don't think any of them saw action, but okay. it, it is what we carried into Korea, and later into Vietnam. But uh, so they, they they had this mounted on the belt, and uh, obviously his canteen, his first aid kit. Uh, but he would get two of these, and this would either be for rifle grenades, uh, you know, a satchel of grenades, additional um, you know ammunition. And, uh, these are designed. Uh, well, let's let's talk yeah. about this right now. Um, so there, there was like three or four different kinds of grenades. Okay. The, uh, they actually had a, a rifle grenade that was uh, kind of a long tubular. Yeah. That uh, they had one that was uh, was high explosive. They had one that was high explosive anti tank. It had a shape charge in the head. It would exactly, have to come yeah. down exactly. And, uh, like or that. you could shoot it. You could shoot it uh, straight on oh, armor as long okay. as it wasn't a glancing yeah. blow. I think initially it would penetrate about three inches. By the end of the war, I think they got it to six, nice. which is which is freaking yeah, that's uh, yeah, damn near a tiger tank right exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, just it's, it's an right. un outrageous. Uh, but I don't have any of those. They're, I mean, those are hard to find. These are a little bit easier to find. And uh, basically, all it is is it's just this. Uh, because these don't blow up like the other ones do. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, you you, you clip it. you yeah. uh, and and this was ingenious. I thought because the. Uh, all, the, all it is is just this M1. Everything's an M1, right? Yeah. This is a, <laughs> so, so you an M1A3, M2. Yeah. you know, grenade launcher bracket, right? I understand. And, we paint this one yellow yeah. so we can find right, it can find easier, it. guys. And okay. basically, you're just taking, you know, a pineapple grenade, you know, off of your out of your bag, off your kit, off your kit, and uh, and you're putting it onto this. Um, now, onto guys, this mount. notice there's a there's a loop there to actually hold the spoon, all right? Um, hold the spoon yeah. down. Correct, because inertia, once you yeah. fire this thing, is uh, is going to propel that grenade out. It's going to spin like a son of a gun. And it's going to flip the... This uh, is catching air. If this doesn't leave, then that spoon stays with it, but they come apart. It. They, they do, yeah. yeah. And, and, and most of the ones that have been fired, you'll see that it's missing this piece. And uh, so they, they, okay. they will at some point in time separate. And I don't know if that's the inertia from firing it. Um, the weight of the grenade, okay. but uh, you but, maybe should have painted this yellow but, also, <laughs> so, Major, so we can't find your stuff. We can get ready to shoot an historical uh, item out in the field on the tactical rifleman property, and uh, if not, yeah. I'll find it with a bush hog later. There you go. After yeah, yeah, the yeah. snow melts, you know, and, yeah. and you can still find these online. This is about seventy-five bucks. I mean, I can't believe how expensive these things are. This one's a little less because it was all bent up, and I, I had to go you ahead straightened and, uh, it out yourself. Straightened it out. All right, Let's, um, uh, you can't just slide this on any M1 grand. No. There's a so lot you got of grands the, uh, out there. All right. So you got the, uh, this is the actual grenade launcher itself. And uh, now, now when they first started hooking these onto the grands, yeah. they, um, they, it was too much gas. So it was trapping the gas in here in the grenade, and it, was, uh, it wasn't allowing it to bleed out. Okay. And uh, so it was, it was breaking the op rods. So, uh, so what they did is, uh, if you look at the end of the M1, M1 grand here, you've got this little gas plug. And uh, so if you've got an older one that's just got a slit in it, like a, uh, a standard screw, flathead, screw flathead screwdriver, it's, it's probably not a newer one. Uh, if, it's, if it's got more of the Phillips uh, type uh, feel to it, it's, uh, it's a newer one. Okay. Now, but what, what you also want to do too, is you want to ensure that it's spring loaded, because this is spring loaded, because this little, uh, this little, little teat here, yep. as you put it onto the, uh, the, the weapon itself, See, so it's got the grenade lug here, or I'm sorry, the, the bayonet, bayonet lug. lug yep. So you put the bayonet lug. So it locks lug, on the bayonet lug. So it'll, it'll lock into there, but uh, what you want to do, you want to test it. Grenade. There we go. Boom. There we go. So right. see that? All right. All right, it is spring loaded. All right. Okay. So it's spring All loaded, right. so we know this one's good. And then you just clip it. Easy so now enough. It's, now it's clipped into place. Not rattling, as, not making noise. As you can see here, it's one through six, right? 
You guys, and, uh, it's actually numbers on the top, so the Grenadier looking down on it. Um, yeah, one at the bottom. Oh, it's one. No, it's yeah. six at the bottom. No, it's one. One, one, one at the bottom. bottom two, six three, at the four, top. Five, yep. six. So, so this is like the charges on a mortar round. Yeah. Yep. Charge six, charge three, charge. So if you go all the way down to to, to the end or you're charge one, maximum. You're recoil. getting max recoil, and that's for your further distances. You want your your shorter distances. Uh, from what the reading I've been doing, it's it's about three. Is probably your mid uh, your mid gas. Right there, right there. I gotta get so right your glasses there. out the range. <laughs> I'm not meaning embarrassing. Not meaning embarrassing. Uh, so we so we could try four, okay. maybe even five, uh, and then we can work it down to work it down to three. Okay. But look at all the steps that the guy's going through because he's got to estimate the range. Fire. And then uh, he's got this handy dandy thing here that any any grenadier worth his salt is going to memorize. And uh, so he's going to go, what type of grenade am I firing? Uh, for us, we're, we're using the, the, the top pineapple one, the pineapple up. grenade with the, uh, with the bracket. And uh, so he's going to look at it and go, okay, I've got, uh, I've got a target out there at, at about uh, 100 meters. So, uh, so with my M1 rifle, I want a 45 degree angle and I want it on charge four. Okay. And uh, so right there, bam. So I want on four. I want it at a 45 degree angle, and then I'm going to pull we the pin see. on the grenade, right? Ooh, yeah, don't forget yep, that yep, step. Yep. Now remember, he's having to do all of these steps while he's under fire. Under fire, yep. So there's some thought that has to go into this. It's a thought process mm. for, for the grenadier. He's got to be one of your smarter guys. There's a scene in the uh, movie Save It Private Ryan where they're hitting the beach. You know, It's yes. about 12 minutes in, and uh, they're at one of the emplacements, and they actually show guy lobbing the uh, rifle grenade in at one of the uh, larger um, artillery pieces. And yeah, to be that guy standing there lobbing yeah. that, yeah. And, and, and everything that I've read too, um, that those guys got that good. But uh, yeah, I have no and, doubt, and, you, you, I've and heard again, stories of the, the uh, late in the war, uh, M79 guys in Vietnam with the thumpers yeah, getting they, very, very accurate. They came out with this um, quadrant site. This quadrant site. And so you can see here on the on the side where it's graduated, it's going to yep. tell you, and it's actually got a little level in it as well, and uh, so you can you can tell what. Oh, uh, okay. So if I'm at uh, is that 45 right there? I want to I want to turn bam. it so you guys can see this here real quick. Um, obviously, you wouldn't patrol with it like this, but uh, basically it pops off. Yeah, there's right only there. one way you can get it on. Yep, yeah, there's only there's only one place it'll go on. I can make a liar out of me. All right, and then he puts it on, and you'll hear the you'll hear the clicks. Uh, and basically, remember, he's already mentioned your gun needs to be at 45 degrees. So he can dial in whatever degree he wants it. He brings it up until his bubble level is level. And then places charge marks. And then he's aiming with this thing right here. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, you can, uh, again, late in the war, the, uh, because of the recoil, they, they had these, uh, these plastic butt stocks. Okay. So this is just a piece of rubber that, uh, you know, it's about an inch or is so. Is that rubber. authentic? Really? But, uh, it is, yeah. Okay. And uh, so I've got this, Some of them I've got also this set up for, uh, exactly. Some of the guys would, would do it on the slings. You put it on the ground and maybe you mark your sling that uh, when you've got your bubble there. Okay, that's my 45 degrees and you can, you can put a piece of tape there. Yeah, yeah here's mark my, it here's on my the 30 inside. degree. Yep. And then you know just from the sling being on the ground and you can get it into action faster. Uh, this Could also they shoot here, it from the shoulder? You can shoot it from the shoulder. But they say don't uh, charge three. Don't go over charge exactly. three. Exactly. Do right. not go over charge three. All right, I'll that's have to about, remember that's that. About it. Don't go over charge <laughs> three on your shoulder. Yeah, I'm gonna forget that one too. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so going through this again, yeah. you've got. Uh, Put and, the blank. And Make I, sure I don't, you don't do it with a live round. Correct. Yep. Yep. So uh, so as as you're walking through and you're you're the grenadier, and uh, your your boss says, hey, put one through that window. Then, uh, then you've got to go into action. Do you, do you, do you already have rounds. this? Because again, the, with the gas, in order the, to have this new gas block in here, bleed off enough gas, it won't cycle the weapon. So, so, so every time, every time you boom, fire around, flick. you're just like bam, 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 and you can get pretty fast at it. I saw, I saw a ranger kid uh, who was working this down at uh, at Benning. Mm -hmm. It was just like I mean, he had the. He had the whole. He, he was. Oh, like, he was yeah. on it, man. Okay. On yeah, it. I'm, I imagine they would on get it like a That was your assigned so, job. But uh, so, all right, we got to put a grenade down there. Rack that thing back. Bing. 
live rounds are going to come out. And then what I can't get over is where is this at? Did they keep them on? It's, I guess you could put in a whole clip, but uh, no, maybe keep yeah. one loose. Right? Well, you got to, you got, they got to be loose somewhere. So what I think I'm going to try is uh, for a 1919 A6 belt, you know, the cloth belt. Yeah. I think I'm going to work in like like a shotgun shell, right? Yeah. So just have uh, about a dozen of them in there, maybe in the bag, so I can pull it out, put Stick a round one in up there, in that. okay. Get it, uh, get it in there. Now I got my blank loaded, you know. Right. And then uh, <laughs> got to figure out my charge. All right, it's going to be a charge, charge three. three. All right. Then I got to pull my pin, right? And then I, am I going to shoulder fire it or am I going to fire it off the ground? And then. <laughs> I just go ahead boom, and go. All right. Um, this is awesome. We're going to take this out to the range. Uh, but before we do, uh, one, it's, I got snow outside right now, guys. Why? <laughs> because I'm big on the history of the Battle of the Bulge. So to rub it in, he decided he wants to come down when we've got snow on the ground. So we're going to do this Battle of the Bulge style uh, out in the cold, out in the snow. But before we go out there, I'm going to let YouTube slap you right in the face with another commercial. Mm -hmm. All right, we're out here. We got the sound of freedom just went by. We just had a Task Force 160 helicopter go by. They probably didn't have to hear that stuff in World War II. Negative. Would have been nice to have, though. Oh, hell yeah. So, Major Rick Lamb is out here dressed in full battle rattle like a M1 Garand Grenadier would be dressed, right? So, um, you've already got your rifle uh, grenade adapter on there, which means Correct. this thing's now single shot. Correct. Yeah, I've seen actual pictures during World War II where the, I think the Grenadiers made a conscious decision that he's just going to have to pump the action bang, every time racket, bang, so he doesn't racket. have to worry about getting that okay. thing on quickly. Yeah, no, it makes so. total sense to me. And a lot of guys were running bolt action guns back then. Exactly. Yeah, all, right. Uh, all right, um, to our front, I know it's hard for you guys to see. There's no snow up there, thank goodness. You see, I got snow here at my feet, but that's uh, literally because of the tall grass up there. We took two of our rubber uh, mannequins off of our shooting range. I've got them up there to represent our bad guys out in the open. I even mowed a bullseye around it to see if you can hit it. Now, um, what's up with our blanks that we have? Okay, yeah, the modern day blanks, the, uh, these things came with a, with a chart. You estimate the distance and then the, the distance is, corresponds with the amount of gas you need in this yeah. tube and uh, for that specific grenade blank. They don't make those anymore. So what we have is parade ground blanks yeah, well, you know, for, for an honor details, guard or a funerary. Stuff, yeah. So it's not going to go as far. So, uh, but, but we'll, uh, this, you know, it's a tractable rifleman first. We'll see how far it goes. Yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Let's. Uh, and again, a lot, a lot of things uh, going on. Bam. They call for Grenadier. We got people out front. I've got to estimate the range. Come down and get into my handy dandy grenade bag. You gotta load that blank first. Yep, I gotta get rid of my live ball. Ping, live ball goes out. Then I gotta get a blank. And again, all new respect for the kids that had to do that. Yeah, can you imagine because right now? He's under fire, squad leaders yelling at him. And uh, he's got to get this thing out. So I got my blank in. But if you put a live round through this thing. Bad. Yeah, bad. bad. It will probably, um, probably kill you. We do have modern rifle grenades that'll, that have a bullet trap in the bottom. But that is so not what we had here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go with total Max gas. Charge. Max charge. Max charge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to estimate my 45 degree angle. And we are ready to go hot. You good? All right. Give Send me it. Yell. Fire it. Man, we're not getting much love here. And that's about that's about as good as we're gonna get. That's about as good as we're gonna get. You guys grasp the concept. I'll tell you what, let's do one more. Let's, okay. let's run it a little higher. You got another round? I do. Let's, let's run it again. Understand guys, him resetting this under fire, he's basically, okay, I hit left, I hit right. Because understand this thing is catching wind at altitude. We do have a headwind hitting us that's also hindering some of our range. He's tossing the second br uh, blank in there. So I've got good, uh, good, wi good windage. 
But I need, uh, I, I don't think I can get any more elevation. The, uh, get my second grenade. All right, now remember guys, if you don't pull the pin, that grenade don't blow up. Pulls that pin. Bam. You get it? Ooh, Pins out. Is ready to go. We're ready to go. Ready to go. Raise it up a little bit more, a little bit more. Right there. I think that's what, that's it. That's the money shot. Money shot. Coming at it. And it lands right next to the other one. Kathong. Bam. <laughs> but I think that's all we're going to get with our blanks. All right, guys. Uh, a little anticlimactic. I mean, that's why Hollywood does this stuff and uh, not us. But uh, all in all, good stuff. Good stuff, Sergeant Major. I appreciate you coming Easy out day. here playing in the snow with me. Easy day. You are dressed up sexy, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so glad sexy. I didn't have to wear that stuff. Those, in the uh, oh, those poor bastards. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Uh, my fingers and toes I, will thaw out. Um, have you we, ever felt more we, retarded trying to get this we, thing into action? <laughs> we did eventually find all the parts that were out in the snow. Um, other than that's why it took longer on that video than uh, we expected. Um, Awesome stuff. Uh, literally, I, I came in the military where they're using the M203 grenade launch mounted under the M16. I've played with the M79 thumpers. I've, tri I've, I've played with the uh, six and eight round ones with the rotary drum. I have used Mark 19s and Mark 47 automatic grenade launchers, but they all go back to this sexy son of a gun right here. And uh, so I'm Edge, I appreciate you bringing Easy. them out. Easy and uh, you guys know the deal. Uh, if you want to make fun of us because we were cold out there, <laughs> uh, leave the comments below. Any questions you got for the good SAR major here, put them below. I'll make sure he gets all of them. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.